Good day, everybody. I'm Dr. Neda Amani, and welcome to The Dr. Ned Show. Today, I have a guest who many of you are going to be more excited than I am, <laughs> but I'm excited for a different reason, um, to have on our show, Theo Fleury. Theo, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is great. This is wonderful. Why, why I'm being cheeky is because I'm excited because you're, uh, uh, like I've said, the perfect type of person that I would love and, and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to um, because you are working from the heart. Um, I believe you are, you're fulfilling your mission, your soul's mission with what you're doing right now. Um, and that's why you're here. So I really appreciate having you. Um, others are going to be super excited because they are big hockey fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's interesting that, uh, <clears throat> but you know, I've totally made a complete transition from, you know, that, you know, that former life to, you know, one of, you know, healing and transformation and, uh, you know, all those things. And so it's, uh, you know, I found the true purpose for my life. And, uh, you know, I always thought it was supposed to be a hockey player, but, uh, you know, obviously God had a bigger plan for me. And, uh, you know, uh, I faced, you know, a ton of adversity as a, you know, as a young person and, uh, you know, that, that adversity sort of, you know, correlated into, you know, what I'm doing today. And that's, you know, that's what really matters. And that's what counts is, is today. It's exactly today. Yeah, it is today. And I think one of the biggest gifts that in my brief interactions with you is that you are centered in the here and now and recognize that our power, um, and this is the this is one of the main things that I wanted to really touch with you today is that our power individually, collectively lies in the here and now, you know, what we've done in the past, what we've experienced in the past is there, we can learn from it, but our future really is dependent on, you know, us fully being present in the here and now. Um, yeah. yeah. And with that, I, you know, I would love well, for you know, they, they say, if you think about the past, that's depression. And if you think about the future, that's anxiety. And so, uh, you know, the, the planet is in a, living in a very high state of anxiety because we don't know what the future looks like. And so, you know, if we can somehow, uh, and, you know, this is from, you know, my AA, Alcoholics Anonymous teachings is that, you know, it's one day at a time, right? And, and that tells me that, um, I really don't have control over tomorrow. I only have control of today and, uh, and today is what counts and, and trying to be as present as possible to, you know, to either learn something or, or, uh, you know, heal from something. Right. And, uh, um, you know, it's a, it's a very Buddhist mentality, which is, you know, which is really great. Um, and uh, so, you know, there are lots of really cool tools that you can use to, you know, to stay present uh, in the moment, you know, breathing or meditation or, uh, you know, what you and I are doing today, you know, having a conversation. So, you know, there's lots of really great ways to, to do that. And if you, the, the more you stay present, the more, uh, uh, the less, uh, I would say grief you cause yourself, the less anxiety you have, the less, you know, just less, 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 less. Right. So, you know, that's, that's important piece, which, but, you know, if you have unresolved trauma, it's really, 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 really hard to stay in the present, you know, and, you know, if you look at what's happening right now, you know, COVID is the most traumatic thing that's happened since World War II, right? So if you already have trauma, uh, they've added another layer of trauma on top of that. And so all of your unresolved trauma from the COVID experience is now presenting itself to you. And, you know, here we are in a, you yeah. know, in a state of, uh, of, of high anxiety because like I said, we don't know what the future looks like. 
And so, okay, so let's be fully present. You and I, first of all, I'm going to send you a big virtual hug. <laughs> because if you were, yeah, because as you're here, I'm, I'm feeling that hug coming out to you. You're, I'm in Ottawa, you're in Calgary. Um, fully present. It's a beautiful sunny day here. You told me. Yeah, it's great here too. So. Yeah, yeah. Spring is here and you feel the energy of new life um, and of hope, even though um, what we're seeing with our eyes is not necessarily that right now. But I don't know if you feel it, but I, I, I felt I, I'm feeling a big uh, energy of hope. Um, and I shared with you before we started our conversation publicly um, that my intention for our conversation today is for, first of all, you and I to just enjoy every nanosecond of it, um, have greater peace and joy um, from our time together, uh, and then really radiate that out with learning more about life, what, what we're here to do, and how we can um, work together in, uh, in yeah. making, you know, um, making a more just and peaceful, loving world, really. Um, and that's the well, healing. And that's, you know, that's a piece and of... Shout out. <laughs> you know... That's a piece of, of trauma that is presenting itself right now is yeah. the anger, the anger piece, right? Yeah. You know, and I, you know, anybody who watched me play hockey, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it was all about anger and rage, you know, that's how I played the game and that's how I was coached as well. You know, the coaches coached my anger. And so I was walk, always walking on this tightrope where I could fall on either side, right? I could either be positive or it could be really, you know, really negative experience. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's funny when I watch, when I watch the different rallies, you know, and the different groups that are there, you know, uh, I don't see it as a protest. I see people acting out their unresolved anger and resentment, right? So it's right. not even even about, you know, the cause. It's about, I, here's a place where I can place my anger and rage and not be judged or not be, you know, ridiculed for the way that, that I'm acting, you know? And, and uh, so, and, and to me, you know, I, I work in the field of trauma, mental health and addiction, and, you know, we're very aware that there's a mental health issue. Mm. We're very aware that there's an addiction issue, but we always leave out the catalyst, which is trauma, right? Yeah. Trauma brings us into yeah. mental health. Trauma brings us into addictive behavior as a coping mechanism to suppress the emotional pain and suffering from the traumatic experience. Right. And so, so, yeah. um, you know, we're, we're obviously talking about, you know, healing and, you know, when you heal the trauma, the mental illness and the addiction piece goes away mm -hmm. because we don't need, um, you know, medicine, but when we're also in spiritual practice, all that stuff goes away as well. And then, you know, and what are they trying to do? They're trying to take God out of the equation. And when you take God out of the equation, what happens? Chaos, chaos, right? Yeah. That's what happens. And so, um, you know, I, I'm a big, uh, proponent of spirituality and, you know, I'm not talking about the white bearded guy in the sky. I'm not talking about, you know, communion and the Eucharist and all that. I'm not talking about that piece. I'm talking about relationship, right? That's spirituality. Relationship is spirituality. Yeah. And it's you know, not religion. One, it's not religion. No, it's, it's not religion. It could be religion, but it's not. Yeah. yeah if, if that's where, if that's where you get your relationship, great. Yeah. You know, and to me, you know, that's, you know, I, when I was a kid going, to, you know, I was an altar boy in the Catholic church. The only reason why I went to church was because I was going to see all the people that I cared about, you know, yeah. and it wasn't about, you know, the ceremony or the, you know, the re religious protocol. Yeah. It was, I was going to see the people 
that I cared about, but they also cared about me as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So relationship and, you know, the, the one relationship that I neglected the most through my whole entire struggle was the relationship I had with myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we're abused, whether that's, you know, physical, emotional, spiritual, or sexually abused, what happens is, is our spirit leaves because it can't even handle what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So the journey back to self is going out and finding that spirit and bringing it back. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we're spiritual beings living human experiences. Right. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, we die, but our spirit doesn't die. It goes on mm -hmm. to live. So, you know, making peace with your spirit before you go into the next phase of whatever that is, mm -hmm. you know, that's the important piece. Right. And, uh, um, you know, I've been to 420 of the 630 first nations communities all across Canada, 420 of the, how many? 630 communities. Wow. And what happened was, you know, I was there to be a speaker. Yeah. But what happened was, is those people gave me back my life, <clears throat> gave me back my life spiritually because I started to participate in their ceremonies. Right. Wow. The smudge, the sweat lodge, the drum, the rattle, the pipe. You know, I started using all these amazing tools of healing i start. i just picked them up and i started to use them and i asked questions and and uh you know and when i did that that's when my life went to the next level of peace joy happiness and serenity because i didn't know that i didn't know I, all i knew was chaos because that's the environment that i grew up in right mm -hmm. and then as a professional athlete you know, I was allowed to act out my anger and bring chaos to, you know, that 200 by 85 box, which I played in. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so there was <clears throat> that, but then when I retired, I don't need that anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I don't need the anger. I don't need the resentments. I don't need any of that stuff. You know, I just want peace. I want joy. I want happiness. I want serenity. Right. And that's mm -hmm. ultimately what every healing journey is about is getting to that place where, you know, all the external stuff doesn't, doesn't matter. doesn't bother you. doesn't affect you. And recognizing doesn't even make you happy. So you were applauded. You won the Sandy cup. Um, mm -hmm. In 19, I, I, I didn't do very much background because I just wanted us to be together in the present. And, and, and yeah. um, but you, yeah. you know what, even though you were, yeah, I, had a, I had a very successful career. professional life, Yeah. but, but even that imploded, even that wasn't enough. Right. Yeah. Cause I got kicked, I got kicked out of the NHL in 2003 because I couldn't stop drinking. I couldn't stop doing drugs and my behavior was completely out of control. Right. And then probably a year later, I had a fully loaded pistol in my mouth, ready to pull the trigger and end my life. Not because I wanted to die, yeah, but because I was completely exhausted from living in emotional pain and suffering. And there was no more relief. And, you know, the drugs stopped working, the booze stopped working, the women stopped working, like nothing worked, nothing worked, Yeah, you know? And, and I was forced into, you know, and because I didn't want to die, I chose to live. Well, I don't know how to live. I just know how to cope. Right. And so that pushed me into, you know, uh, healing. Right. And then once I, you know, surrendered, got sober, made a choice, started working on myself all these different people started showing up mm -hmm. to help me get, you know, get to where I wanted to go. Right. But I had to make, I had to make the, the choice of surrendering first and foremost, right. That I'm not running the show here, you know, 
Yes. That there's some, you know, greater yes. force, whatever you want to call it, God, all of Buddha, Jehovah, you know, whatever the hell greater, you want to call it. whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, or the universe or whatever it is. Yeah. And, you know, once I gave up that control, uh, you know, things got a lot better. You know, when you say that, and I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad that you did. <laughs> I know this personally as well, Theo. Uh, I've shared it with my mental health struggles. I have it on both sides, suicide on both sides of my family, mental health struggles on both sides of my family, and, and trauma, right? We are, we're, anyone who's alive right now is, going, is, going, is being asked to heal generations of trauma. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and our soul has asked, you know, to stand up for this call, right? And, and I think the, the feeling I came to with the understanding, um, and it wasn't very long ago, that the part of me that wanted to die was the false self, was the ego self. Yeah. It wasn't the Absolutely. real, it wasn't the real me. It was the self that um, had been set up by the trauma of my upbringing, the trauma of generations before, the pain that hadn't been healed and resolved. You know, and that had put me into a box of understanding, you know, your box was the hockey rink, right? My box yeah. was the ring, was the, was the rink, was the environment of, you know, what I'm expected to do as a good, you know, Iranian, Middle Eastern girl, right? Immigrant right. to a foreign country and, um, and what's good and what's bad and all those judgments that go before that. And, and I think when you recognize that that's the false self, that's not the real self, that the real self is so much beyond that and you're you release you know you're just like the you know you release like the wings to really go for what you were really purposely you know made to to be first of all yeah. and then and then allow doing through you everything changes and you're absolutely right then the universe god whatever the creator comes comes full force with all the people everything that you need to support you um yeah in fulfilling your destiny which must come from a place of peace because even though like you were in the rink you were in rage you were not well you were being applauded you were being rewarded the world was saying way to go you're a superstar you were making lots of money i'm sure you had all the women you wanted you had everything that you could possibly want but they weren't the real things they were the things of the material world yeah, well, they talk about it in the Bible, false idols, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, ego ego is such a destructive thing in my life, you know? Because, uh, you know, when I grew up, I was this amazing kid, you know, focused and kind and respectful and all those things. And, you know, as I as I, and I, you know, as I, when I left that bubble, then, you know, I got all these, you know, other influences of, you know, fame and fortune and, you know, all, all this stuff. And, you know, I, lo I lost myself. Like I lost that yeah. piece, right. You know, that inner child yeah. stuff, like just was like gone, yeah. you know, and, and, and then, you know, um, September 17th, 2005, you know, I hit my knees in a washroom and, you know, I surrendered and, and that's, you know, that's the day that I got sober. You know, I think I've been sober now. I have this little app on my phone that tells me wow, September. I have five, 5,600 and 79 consecutive days of wow. sobriety, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. but I had to surrender first. Yeah. You know, God wanted me to, uh, you know, He brought me to my knees, right? Because yeah. He knew that I needed to surrender, turn my will in my life over to the care of the universe as I understand it, right? Where I, I have no control over anything. And when I do have control, it only makes it worse, worse. right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, every time I drive the bus, the bus always, always crashes. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, but September 18th, 2005. 17th. You said 17th. 
September well, 7th. that was the night before. I was oh, still drunk. Oh, okay. I was still drunk on my knees. Oh. I woke up the next morning and I haven't had a drink or a drug since. So, wow. you know, September 18th of 2005, I got out of the driver's seat and I moved into the passenger seat and I don't care who drives the bus anymore. <laughs> right. So who, so, so, so many questions. First of all, those numbers are not by tens. We are recording this on April the 7th and you and I are both fans of numerology on our yes. last conversation. And that's 17, right? Adds up to the age. And then 2005 is seven. So, so those numbers, those are, they're not by tens, the days that, you know, in our lives that things change. What brought you, so two things, what brought you down to your knees finally? And then, and then let's go back to the story with the indigenous um, populations that you've worked with, because yeah. I think, you know, I've had my own, this land, the, our center right now, um, I was called to bless the land with an indigenous elders before we even started construction. Um, oh, and wow. Yeah. So we had a whole ceremony. Hopefully we'll cool. load it up onto the website one day, um, onto our website one day. And and there's so much, you know, and I've done, I've tried to do a sweat lodge. I didn't last. I, oh. I, I went in and I was out within less than 10 minutes, but I will do it, Theo. Maybe you can coach me yeah, <laughs> on, how, sure. on how to survive it. But, you know, I always think that they're, I mean, there's so much that they have to teach all of us so Lovely. much. Like, I think... You know, I think it would be wonderful um, for them, for the elders and people in these communities to come and actually develop parts of our educational curriculum for young and old alike, um, because their relationship with the creator, with the divine, with all um, that has been passed down for centuries, we know is something that I think we all had at some point in time, but we've lost connection yeah, to. So, sure. yeah. So if you can kind of tell, share with how did you get down to the knees part and then maybe go back in, you know, how you said back when you started the, your interactions with the communities, yeah. that's what you learned, the tools that you learned to help your healing. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I had, Well, I, I remember, uh, I remember having a conversation with, uh, a guy, uh, when I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, I used to go to this all men's meeting every Wednesday. And there was a guy there, his name was Jack. And, uh, he was a very handsome man. He had this long, like he was an old biker, oh, right? Okay. Okay. He had this long, beautiful, long white hair and he was tanned and he was, you know, he was in really good shape. And, you know, he said to me, he said, uh, you know, do you realize in this program that you get to pick your own God? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, because my, my concept of God was, you know, the Catholic church and my mom was a Jehovah witness. Okay. Right. So a cult, my mom belonged to a cult. Right. And so, you know, when he said the question, those are the two things that popped into my head. And I was like, I don't want to need that. And then he said, you know, you get to pick your own God. And I was like, Hmm, interesting. Mm. So, uh, the person that I was living with at the time, her and I had a huge argument and we were both drunk, we were both high, we were both really fucked up. And I was left in the washroom on my hands and knees. And so I remembered the conversation with Jack. Mm. And I said, okay, I'm going to give this God thing a try. So I went up one side of God, I went down the other side of God, I called him every name in the book that I could think of, I made up a couple of my own. And then I said, you know, God, I, I realize that you only give me as much as I can handle. I said, well, I'm full. I'm full. I said, you can't put one more thing on my plate. Right. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the conversation, I said, uh, please, please, God, take away the obsession to drink and do drugs. And I went to bed. Next morning I got up and 
I was on my way to the washroom and in my house at that time, there was a big mirror that I had to walk by. And so as I'm rubbing the sleep out of my eyes, I glance out of the corner of my eye and I see my image and I stop dead in my tracks. And I can't remember the last time I actually looked at myself in the eye because I was so full of shame, so full of guilt, so Mm -hmm. full of anger, so full of resentment that I did not like myself at all, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But here I am, you know, staring in the mirror at myself, you know, for the first time. And, you know, about five minutes into that exercise, I started to feel different. Of looking in at at the mirror? Yeah. 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 Couldn't, couldn't, you know, uh, but there was something, you know, I felt energy, you know, whatever, whatever that was. Yeah. And then about 40 minutes of staring at myself in the mirror, I went, holy shit, you know, my prayer has been answered. And that was September 18th, 2005. And I haven't had a drink or a drug since that, you know, that episode. <clears throat> and, you know, I think that, you know, God, creator, whatever, um, knew that I was ready. And so he granted me that answer to my prayer, which was, you know, no more drugs, no more booze, no more, we're, we're going to go on this healing journey. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I used to run a hockey school here in Calgary for 15 years. And there was a lady from Siksika nation, which is 40 minutes, uh, east of Calgary. Um, a Blackfoot community and she used to bring kids to my hockey school Mm. and every morning before the hockey school started her and I would have coffee together and you know she would tell me about her life and I think like 50 years ago she was living on Skid Row she was a residential school survivor and you know had a spiritual awakening picked herself up dusted herself off went back to school Mm -hmm. got herself educated and just became this incredible woman and you know the thing that i was attracted to the most was her serenity and i was like you know what i want that peace i want to be that calm that caring that loving that nurturing that all those things right i wanted that Mm. and so you know i got traded from calgary and her and i lost touch so i moved back to calgary in 2004 Uh, i started a business uh, with my family shortly after that and then one day we were all sitting around at the end of work And who walks through the door, but, you know, Grandma Ruth or Shield Woman is her name. Shield Woman. Shield Woman. Shield Woman. Yeah. And so, you know, she walks in, sits down and we pick up, you know, right where we left off. And, you know, then she started to teach me about, you know, indigenous spirituality right you know one of the first things she did was you know she got me a smudge bowl and you know some tobacco some Mm -hmm. sweet grass and sage and taught me how to pray and meditate with the sage right and then you know I went to sweat lodge and like had just one of the most unbelievable spiritual experiences of my whole entire life and and then you know my book came out and then I started speaking and you know I started going to all these indigenous communities to help them deal with you know the residential school and the after effects of you know the residential school Mm -hmm. and what happened was you know I started hanging out with the elders and the spiritual teachers and the medicine men and all these people. Right. And they started teaching me, uh, you know, about spirituality and uh, Mm. you know, like I, 
I sweat with one of the most powerful medicine men in the world who lives like two hours south uh, from, from me. And his name is Arnold Mountain Horse. And he takes people from the Tom Baker Cancer Center in Calgary who've been given four or five months to live and cures them in the sweat lodge. So, you know, and wow. what, what he tells me is that every disease, mm -hmm. there's a cure. And Absolutely. it's not a synthetic version. It's not a man-made version. Mm -hmm. It's actual plant medicine. Right. And spiritual. And, everybody, and spiritual. And, it, I believe and it's spiritual. spiritual. Yes, yeah. absolutely. The plant medicines, no they connect us to their, our yeah. connection to the spirit. They can be our connection to the spirit world. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, I really believe that the indigenous people do spirituality better than any group on the planet because it's individual and you get to pick there's you know there's not a whole lot of rules you know mm -hmm. or uh rituals um it's just really basic stuff but it but it really at the end of the day it's it's about helping you have a relationship with yourself yeah right because if i have a really great relationship with myself how do you think all of my other relationships are going to be? They're going to be the same, right? And I'm going to attract the right people, right? When I'm in that uh, awesome state of, of uh, you know, and, and ultimately, um, you know, what's the commonality? Trauma. Trauma is the commonality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they say we have a systemic racism pro problem in society. I say, no, we have a systemic trauma mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. because every person that I work with, mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the trauma piece, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm waiting for them to use their voice mm -hmm. to tell me the trauma piece because I guarantee you, everyone, they have never spoken of the trauma yeah. in their life. And they see me as a safe, non-judgmental, safe person mm -hmm. who will understand what, what, what they're telling me, right? And all I have to do is use these two things <laughs> called ears and listen, right? If I'm listened, attuned, and present, you know what happens? Miracles. It actually rewires yeah. that person's brain. Those three simple things, present, attunement, and you rewire that person's brain. That's all you need to do. And you're not you judge and you're non-judgmental. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to yeah. give advice. Yeah. I don't have to have some magic formula. Nothing. Nothing. I just have to be me. Just have to be me. You don't right? have to have an MD or an education or anything. Yeah. No. 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 What a story. Okay, so there's so much there. So wow. Wow, which one do I ask you first? <laughs> well, you know I'm a bigger his I have to just name out, shout out to Gabor Mate who I love dearly and what an incredible man who's done such great work. And he talks about this quite a bit. Um, you know, how we all have, we all have trauma and in our own healing, if you hadn't, if you hadn't chosen or, or be chosen, well, you where we're all chosen. If you hadn't chosen to, to say that, you know, my life matters and I'm going to give it another shot and I'm not going to, I'm not going to fall under the lie of that. This is, this is the truth of who I am. There's more to me. Yeah. Then you wouldn't have gotten down on your knees, right? You wouldn't have gone from shame. And I, as you were telling that part of the story, I was wondering whether when you did get down on your knees that night, did you believe that you were going to be, that you deserved it, that you were going to be better, that you, 
needed to be better? I had no idea what the hell I was doing. You did Other than, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I've been in pain for, you know, my earliest memory. I've been in pain. I've lived in anxiety. Yeah. I've lived in chaos, violence, you know, all this stuff. And, you know, I, yeah. and, you know, they talk about, Honesty, openness, and willingness, right? Those are the three things mm-hmm. that I that I live my life. Honesty, openness, goodness, and willingness. Willingness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I hadn't tried that, right? I hadn't tried the honesty, openness, and willingness part, right? And when I stepped into that, that space... Like it was, it was unbelievable. It was life changing because, you know, especially on the book tour, like I wrote this book, like with zero expectations. It was very, like, it was very selfish because I just wanted to get all this stuff on paper, take one last look at it, put it in its rightful place, which was the past and move forward. But what happened by me writing the book was I stepped into my purpose Mm. because people like after the book came out, I got run over, like run over by people everywhere I went. Five, 10, 15, 20 people were coming up at every book signing, every speaking engagement, every workshop I was doing. And they were saying, you know what? Me too. You know what? I read your book. You told my story. Me too. Hey, I saw your documentary. You told my story. Me too. Hey, I read an article in a magazine. You told my story. Me too. And like, Mm -hmm. I just got bombarded. And I was like, wow. This is like of epidemic proportions. Sexual abuse is like right up there. Yeah, it is. You know? Yeah. And then... And then, you know, um, you know, I became like the poster boy for sexual abuse, which I did like, I didn't want any part of that. And so I'm like, okay, how am I going to get out of this, you know, this space? And so I switched and, and I just generalized it all as trauma. And when I started using the word trauma, I brought the whole entire planet into Mm -hmm. my, my space. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, because when we've, when we've all, if you look at just up till now, right, we've all loved, lived under this lie that's been propagated that in order to be happy, in order you have, you need, you know, in order to be successful, all these external definitions and people will go to know all kinds of, you know, efforts (laughs) to get more money, to get the higher status, to have more land, to all the wars, everything that's all is trauma creating for the individual and for others based on buying this lie. You're trying to fill that big empty hole inside Inside. the material thing. Yeah. Right. And I always say he who has the most toys when he dies still dies. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's not, you know, and I had, you know, I made $50 million in my hockey career. And I would say the most miserable I was, was when I had the $50 million. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's not about material things, you know, which, which is what the world is really driven by now. Right. And to me, it's about, mm -hmm. it's about having like five people in my life, and that's that's about it, <laughs> you know. Well, and your personal connection that you're saying, right? That's that's what you were yeah. referring to. The indigenous population is that yeah. is. Um, I think when you were saying that they have it right, because um, I I think judgment is really harmful for ourselves and others. And there's there's always the shame shame and judgment as feelings are the probably the lowest most harmful feelings, um, where you know love and connection to all is at the highest and we can all move through that through the shame and judgment 
And what we see with the indigenous populations, they don't say we have the dibs on spirituality. They don't believe or say, you know, you're going, you know, to proverbial hell and you're not, or you're going to, you know, there's, you're better or we're better. They don't do any of that. They just yeah, accept. There's no fear. There's no yeah. fear attached to their teachings. Yeah. yeah. Same right? with the, same with the Buddhist teachings. Yeah. But yeah. I do believe that original spiritual like the major religions i do believe that you know the teachings of jesus for example i do believe are in line with those teachings i do, i believe that the that they've been they've been changed or perverted over time by man yeah, right? they've, been, they've been commercialized exactly yeah in because order to get the external stuff the power and the because i don't believe that that was the true teachings of um you know the main messengers that came through well it's, it's Religion has been bastardized. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, and so um, you know, when you when you think about you know the the early the early parts of time, all these wars were based on religious beliefs. Yeah. And to me, that's not there's there's nothing about God in war. <laughs> at all no you know what i mean no you know and unless you <clears throat> but, unless, yeah but when you you know like we're trying to undo ten thousand years of trauma right because what's one of the first stories in the bible is you know when <clears throat> adam and eve ate the fruit that's trauma then they had two boys and then one killed the other one. That's trauma. Trauma. Okay. trauma. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I know from epigenetics that that trauma gene gets passed down for seven generations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then finally the seventh generation steps in, goes on a healing journey and on a, on a path and repairs that piece of DNA. And it's a painful, it can be a painful process. There's like the dark night of the soul, which I know a lot of people are experiencing right now. And just to rest assured that if you're experiencing this right now, cause you're standing up and you're, you're being called, you are strong enough. You can do it. It is very difficult. I know this personally and you know, your story, everyone's story that I've, these are the stories that I, I, you know, I've been curious about in the healing journey for people to recover from, you know, without any medical intervention. But it is worth it because now in your position of being more, you know, the Ruth really was a guide and a blessing to tell you, you know, yeah, you've had this world, but it never brought you peace. It never brought you comfort. You know, now come to this side and see what it has to offer you. Yeah. Um, and, and now in that state, can you... Well, there, there's, yeah. there's, there's no courage in judgment. There's no courage in judgment at all, mm. right? Say that and I've never, I've never linked those two together. Say that. How do? You, what do you mean by that? Well, it's so the person who steps out and tells their story is courageous, right? People who judge how they tell their story, there's no courage in that. Yeah, none. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I always tell people all the time, you can judge me all you want, but can I take a peek in your closet? Can I just have a little, can I just go in there and look around and, and, you know, I said, you know what, I'm going to find yeah. in your closet, the exact thing that I just voiced in my mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've been triggered, right? Mm -hmm. Your secret is out. That's a trigger. Your secret is out. Oh my God. I thought I could bury this. I thought I would never have to deal with it. Yeah. Well, now here's this guy who's talking about, you know, sexual abuse and, you know, like when I'm standing up speaking in an audience, I know every single person in the audience yeah. who's been sexually abused. Every one of them, because they can't sit in their chair, they have to leave the room, mm -hmm. you know, all these things, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and and uh, 
you know, there's, there's no courage in judgment. So what message do you have for those people to make it easier, especially right now? Well, they, <laughs> well, I always tell people, if you have trauma, if you have mental health, if you have addiction issues, guess what? You're in the majority, not the minority. Mm-hmm. You're in the majority, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, you know, if you have trauma, well, it's all of us, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, the only way uh, out is through, right? Yeah. And that, that step takes courage. And why? Why would they? Why would they want to do it? What's the benefit, Theo? <laughs> well, um, you're only as sick as your secrets. Mm. Right. Mm. And for 27 years, I was carrying a secret around. Guess what? Guess what? I was sick physically, mm-hmm. emotionally, spiritually. When I told my story, I started to heal the emotional, the spiritual, the physical, right? Mm-hmm. Then, you know, the law of attraction started working in my life because mm-hmm. I made a choice. I'm going on a healing journey. Mm-hmm. I'm going on a healing journey. And I'm willing to do anything and everything to heal myself. Right? Because that's the only thing I pray for is willingness. That's it. Mm. That's the only thing I pray for is willingness. That no matter when healing is presented. Yeah. You know. I I have to read something to you because you just reminded me. Because today is the 7th. So this morning I get from one of my friends. He's a lovely man. He found us this building actually. We He found it wasn't even. Yeah. He, yeah. So. He just sent this this morning that just, I, I've been called that I have to read this out to you. So it's from Matthew 7, 7, 8. So keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just surrendered, right? I think you surrendered fully that night of the 17th. I did. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I, you know, I don't, I don't question anything anymore. I just do. You just. (laughs) Whatever he wants me to do, I do it without, you know, without any resistance. Because the resistance is the anger piece, right? You know, and you know, I, I just don't, I don't want to live in that space anymore. You know, and you know, this this last year has tested me to the limits of, you know, my faith. Are you in touch with the your the elders? You see them right now at the indigenous. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, so- I've, I've done. A few sweats during COVID, yeah. you know, so, you know, I try to, I try to get in the sweat lodge at least once a month. I'm curious how much, oh my goodness, that's great. Okay. You really do need to tell me because I have to overcome that fear. I got in there and within five minutes I couldn't breathe and I like ran out, but I accepted it. I said, okay, this is where you know, you, you know what the sweat lodge, the, the meaning of the sweat lodge is you're sitting in mother earth's womb. Okay. No, I didn't know that. Right? Okay. That's 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 Mother Earth's womb. And that's where we go to heal all of our trauma. Yeah. Right? You know? And the rocks represent the grandfathers and the grandmothers and the creator, right? That's that they're bringing that healing and then they put the medicine on the rocks and then the steam is the cleanse. Is it it cleanses your body gets rid of all the toxins gets rid of all the crap that we carry around other people's energy that plug into us right yeah it's like it's like a complete 
cleanse of self. So what did it mean that I literally could not breathe and I was overwhelmed within five minutes? Now this was probably three or four years, three years ago, and I was going through a lot in the like in the earth. Yeah, that's 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 how it presents itself. Like sometimes I'll get in there, yeah, and it's not even hot, which tells me that I'm doing pretty well. When it gets super hot, yeah, that means there's something that I need to work on because the hotter it is yeah or you know the more I become overwhelmed that means that I just gotta let go oh my ego was in full force at that time in my life <laughs> sure. it, was, it was on overdrive <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But what's really fun for me now is yeah. I, I brought a whole bunch of people yeah you know, to the sweat and it is unbelievable Oh. their experience like that's for me I get so I get such a charge out of watching people you know go through their first sweat lodge for the first time and then the you know what they tell me how their experience was you know it's just it's so awesome okay I'll take that I'll take the invite thanks Theo I'll come out <laughs> I'll come out and see you first of all at some point in time but so tell me, how are they dealing with though? How are the elders dealing with trauma? I, I'm just assuming, this is my assumption, that they don't even talk very much, right? To heal the trauma. Yeah, that's because I've known this with energy work, that you don't actually need to talk very much in order to heal um, at all the levels, the physical, the mental, emotional, spiritual. So how do they, how do they approach the trauma that's within each of us and the healing? Can you, can you share what... Cause you said you did the smudging with the sage. So what do you, yeah. yeah. How do those activities, because I'm assuming again, that those activities are what's facilitating the healing. Yeah, they're not when, you light the, when you light the smudge, yeah. where does the smoke go? All over you. Ah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So, yeah. so whatever you're praying about, it's going up to okay. the creator. Yeah. Right. So it's about, it's about connecting, right? It's about connecting, right? Because my biggest fear was always that I, I couldn't be alone, uh, right? And what yeah. spirituality has taught me is that I'm never, ever, ever alone no. when I'm spiritually connected. And the times that I struggle are the times that I am not practicing spirituality. I'm not meditating, I'm not praying, I'm not sweat lodging, I'm not singing, I'm not drumming, I'm not, you know, all those things. Dancing. And as soon as I pick up the tools and use them. You're not alone. Not, not only that, but I have peace, joy, happiness, serenity, yeah. right? Because the messaging now is like you know it's pulling me away from self right all this messaging is, distraction. Is tapping, distraction is tapping into my unhealed what anger and resentment yeah all that messaging right and what do i can what do i can control nothing <laughs> you know so none of it, none of it. And it's actually tapping into the, again, the lie that you're not good enough. Everything on the external is that you need this, that, and not the other, you know, in order which, to be, which yeah. is a characteristic of trauma. I'm not good enough. Right. The four things that trauma teaches us is abandonment, neglect. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. Do I even exist in the world? Those are the four things that yeah. trauma teaches us, right? And I've rewired all four of those say, in my brain. Say them again. I think they are worth repeating. Abandonment and neglect. Yep. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. Do I even exist in the world? Yeah. Who am I? Who am I? Yep. So. You're a Sparrow fan, aren't you? What's that? Do you love sparrows, the birds? No, I love eagles. Eagles, okay. 
So whenever I feel disconnected from, you know, that connection of all that you said, which was perfect, um, I look up into the sky and I see the eagle, the hawk, the birds, they're happily, joyfully flying many times on their own. Yeah. We're going to wrap up. We're going to wrap up, Theo. Yes, I have. Uh... I'm gonna, this is, this was amazing. You're going to have to come back, Theo. Anytime. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. S send a big have a great day. Thank you. Send a big blessing and thank you to the group out there, to the elders there. Yes, I will. Thank you sure. so much. Thank you. Okay. Have a wonderful Take day. Care. Bye.